Okay, so this section, Understanding Ransomware Challenge. Again, my name is Jim McGann from Index Engines. So we spend a lot of time talking to customers and users about you know, why ransomware is not going to go away. And, and you always read articles in press about, hey, we're going we're gonna to sanction organizations that pay ransoms. We're going to you know, sanction Bitcoin. We're going to make it difficult for them to interact. It's, it's just not going to stop them. You know, the biggest challenge really is that you know, there's a lot of vulnerabilities in the infrastructure. Uh, we get con contacted by customers that want us to support you know, 20 year old databases that haven't had security patches on them in decades. And it's like, you know, that's a bigger problem. Um, you know, th there's the biggest challenge is the, the end user, you know, clicking on emails. You know, the MGM grant attack was done by through an IT help desk that somebody called into and they gave them a password into the network. Um, so there's a lot of vulnerabilities, there's a lot of weakness, there's lack of security, um, there's lack of a data backup and recovery plans. Um, we've had customers that just didn't have a run book on how to recover, or they had a run book digitally on the systems that were encrypted, which did them no good. So they just don't think this through. And it's really a lot of the complexity that exists. It just really makes it difficult for customers to prevent this kind of thing. If a, if a bad actor wants to get in, they're going to get in. So, so the impact can be devastating. So if you look at some of these examples, and these are just from a few months ago, uh, KMP Logistics was a UK-based company. They got attacked June of last year. Um, they shut down, so they're out of business. You know, we, I, we talked to, I talked to one major airline. They say if they're shut down by a ransom attack in five days, they're out of business. And this is a large, you know, brand name airline. Uh, Clorox, you know, 2023, August attack, 20% decline in sales. That's pretty devastating. You know, product didn't make the shelves. You know, their CISO got fired over it. The British Library is a current one. You know, October of last year, they were attacked. Six months to build out the infrastructure, to build the infrastructure back up and running. And then they're starting with the data recovery. So they'll be out six to nine months. You know, it's a library, but their business is just basically shut down. Uh, MGM, I mentioned, you know, that they had, it, it was global news. It would talk them, cost them $110 million to recover from that. So the, the, the results can be devastating. You know, what, what customers need to realize is that you know, preventing an attack is, is near futile. You really need to focus on what is the recovery process? How do I recover and recover intelligently? One of the, um, one of the customers, a joint customer of our partner Dell and CyberSense is the New York City subway system, the MTA, which is a high value target for any ransomware criminal. Well, how many? guesses of how many attacks they have a day. Give it a shot. Anybody? 100,000 attacks per day. That, and the guy who runs their cyber group you know, publicly talked about this. Most of these are non-threatening, but 100,000 attacks. It's a war. I mean, they're, they're in open warfare you know, with, the, with these cyber criminals. So the challenge is the recovery process is challenging. Again, we're not a recovery tool. We just make recovery tools smarter, whether you're a snapshot or whether you're a backup. So the recovery process is way too complicated. I'm not going to go through all the detail here. But you know, I've talked to customers that have had attacks, and they basically have to put up, you know, put up brand new servers, set up a clean room, restore in there, check if the data is good. If it's good, then bring it back into production. This takes weeks and weeks. I mean, you talk to one healthcare organization, and he had to rebuild Active Directory from scratch. And he goes, that took me weeks to do that, and then you start the network, and then you start on databases. So when you read about attacks and you read about the weeks and the months that they're recovering, that's what they're doing, is, is they have to rebuild the entire infrastructure from scratch. You know, we have one customer that when they do get attacked, um, they shred every laptop, every desktop, every server, because they're afraid that the ransomware is hidden in the BIOS somewhere. Um, and they're just paranoid about this. They just don't know what they don't know. They're like, let's start from scratch. I mean, it's a great business if you sell you know, servers and compute. <laughs> it's a good refresh. So uh, our friends at Dell are happy about that. Um, so what most organizations do is, is rely on backup software. You know, and is backup software enough? So they say, well, we back, we back up the data, and that's good enough. And I think you know, a lot of the themes you'll hear me talk about today is good, better, best. You know, and when you're facing these kinds of attacks, good enough is not necessarily good enough. So, you know, the trends that we're seeing, and we track, we have a ransomware research lab that we track all the ransomware that's on the market. We see dozens every week, dozens of new ones. They're all iterations of existing ones and modifications. But, 
it's just very common to see just lots of new ones out there. Um, so what they, what they ultimately want to do is lock down the organization. They want to cripple the organization and force you to pay a ransom. So you know, backup software is not doing validation of the data. It's just making a copy of whatever exists. You know, I, I, one example from uh, one of our partners was saying, you know, customers think it's like putting bad food in a refrigerator and coming back a month later and expecting it to be good. It's still going to be bad. So if you're backing up bad data and you need to recover that bad data, recover that data, it's going to be bad. And, and that's the last time, that, the worst time to be, face that and understand that that's the case. So they're not validating the data integrity. Some organizations are adding capabilities to their backup software, but they're not validating databases. The number one content that's in, in the Dell scenario in the cyber recovery vault is databases. You know, think about it, if your Oracle or SAP HANA database is corrupted and down, you're out of business. So CyberSense provides validation of data integrity across you know, databases, core infrastructure, and files. So there's tons of new sophisticated variants. If, if you talked to me five, four or five years ago, the variants that they were using were pretty simplistic. And we spent a lot of time, I'll, I'll do that today, kind of educating you on the different variants that exist out there. Again, our research lab studies this every day. You know, a few years ago, they were just doing you know, massive encryption on the data, maybe a, a pending a file extension, .lol, .loki, you know, simple stuff that, that's, that's pretty basic. Um, now what they're doing is, is doing much more sophisticated intermittent encryption inside databases, inside files. Some of the algorithms they're using for encryption don't increase any kind of signals or noise about the file or compression rates on the file. They're smart and they have, they have a bag of tricks that they use and they just keep on pulling out and, and modifying. So you, know, you can use backup software to detect you know, metadata changes, threshold changes, obvious changes, but what our claim to fame is with CyberSense is the deep forensic analysis that we do inside files and databases. And when you talk to our customers, they like that confidence that you validate the integrity, I know it's good, and you know, if you walk in Monday morning and there's a ransomware attack, you're like, I've got a clean copy, I know where it is. So. And then finally, you know, AI is the hot topic even for you know, the cyber criminals, right? So they're using AI to, to develop new variants. So CyberSense is based on AI, uses 200 data points, as Jeff was mentioning, to inspect the content. So we had, we had a, uh, a customer that wanted to do a POC, a testing of the product. So we went to ChatGPT and described what an intermittent encrypted variant looks like, and ChatGPT kicked out the code in about two seconds. And it's a highly productive variant that could be used to corrupt data. So it's that easy that, that you can get you don't even know coding, you can get a variant right away. Yep. You worked closely with your team, really looking at the tool and that 99.5% that number jumped out to us. And I know you guys had some really great detail on how you arrived right. at that. I don't want to derail you, but maybe if you could provide right. just a snapshot. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely talk about that. Sure, sure. The, with, without, um, as Jeff, that's why we had uh, Jeff talk about the underlying technology. So it, it, unless you inspect inside the content, you can't provide that level of confidence. And we're going to start talking about that 99.5 is kind of more of an SLA kind of thing. So we test that, and I'll talk about how we do test that. And we test it against corrupted data sets, clean data sets, compare them. And that's a number that, that, we, that we architect and, and we release product based on that number. So it's, as a customer, you don't want to have to get an alert and figure out, is it real? Do I need to do anything? What happened? The 99.5% says when you get an alert, something happened. You need to react to it. And that's what customers want. So it is a real number. You know, Christy, you guys did that whole research with Dell, which was great. But they, um, I'll talk more about what that means and it's, it's important to our customers. So anyway, so I'm going to talk about the importance of data integrity and ransomware. Again, my name is Jim McGann from Index Engines. So, these are terms that some of the analyst firms like Gartner and others are beginning to use. So, and we define things a little bit differently. So, you know, I know Gartner is starting to talk about cyber liability. You know, it's not necessarily about insurance, it's about your liability in your organization. So, if, if you're running, you know, an IT systems at a healthcare organization, understanding, you know, the tech debt that exists, how they can get into the, the environment. Uh, we were talking about like the, uh, the IoT kind of stuff or the networks and access. That, that, that's provided for 
some of their vendors, but also could be used to get in, into the network. So um, organizations need to understand their cyber, cyber liability. And if they don't, um, they're gonna be very vulnerable. So a lot, of, a lot of organizations, you know, storage vendors, other vendors talk about cyber resiliency, which is a great term. It's your ability to recover. So, you know, it's my, my personal opinion that you can't have cyber resiliency without data integrity. So recovering, again, bad data is not gonna help you at all. So we talk about, you know, a lot of the backup vendors are talking about the ability to recover and recover quickly. And it's like, but is the data good? And that's, that's the question that we lead in with customers is like, how do you know what you're backing up and protecting or snapshotting? How do you know that data is good? And I, you know, I presented a conference the last year and after the customer like, you're the only ones talking about, is the data good? That's so critical. We keep on saying, how do we get to figure that out? Is the data good? We don't know. You know and it's our job just to back it up and, and copy it. But again, if it's bad data going in, it will be bad data coming out. Hi, Shira Ribbonoff from the Feature Room Group as well. Um, it, obviously in the cybersecurity world, it's not if you're gonna be attacked, the question is when. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that, as you mentioned, it's not the size of the company, everybody is sitting duck waiting to happen. So as you mentioned, you know, the ability to recover, but also the knowledge that data is reliable, obviously super important hand in hand. Do you give advice to your clients and your customers about how to back up data as well? Not just is it reliable, but what are the steps to do to actually back up appropriate data? Because there's a lot of talk in the cyber industry about that in terms yeah. of clean data and what the steps are to do. Yeah, we, so we're not a data protection product. We just make them smarter. So in the different deployments we have through IBM or through Dell, you know, you know, it's a difference of doing snapshots on a regular basis, you know, dozens of times throughout the day versus a 24 hour backup cycle. Mm -hmm. But what we found with, with, with CyberSense is that customers like to have a dedicated copy of their data for analysis. So I think, you know, a lot of the best practices that we've seen in the storage space is making data mutable, adding, you know, security on top of multi-factor authentication, just adding all these capabilities to lock it down, but they're not checking the integrity of it. So, you know, our best practice is to make a copy of data that's dedicated for analysis. And, you know, if, if you're doing, you know, hundreds of terabytes or petabytes of data, it's analyzing all that stuff on a regular basis, opening files, opening databases. So it's, it's a pretty intensive process, but at the end of the day, when that's done, you'll know that that data has integrity. So, you know, we, do, we don't recommend necessarily a data protection or backup process. We leave it to our partners to do that. We say just make a copy of data that can be analyzed um, for to validate the integrity that, that's recoverable. Do you typically work with the cyber incidents commanders as well when they come in after an attack should occur? We, our partners typically provide that as a service. So Dell has a post-attack recovery service um, and they use our product to recover. So we support them and educate them on how to use a product for recovery. They're doing dozens of recovery a week, you know, and they're thousands of customers. So we educate them on the process mm -hmm. and do that. And I think even some of the customers are using CyberSense and kind of talking to their insurance companies about what they have. Some of the insurance companies now are mandating some level of cyber resiliency, so and they get discounts on insurance. In some countries, in some areas, they won't be able to get insurance unless they prove out that they have a strategy in place. Well, that's a new play in the cyber uh, in the cyber insurance space. Certainly, yeah, no. and all companies are dealing with that as well. <clears throat> exactly. So the importance of data integrity and. In, uh, you know, we have a white paper on this on our website, it is really about minimizing data loss. So some of the backup vendors, what they're doing is they're going to backup data and they're gonna say, hey, the last backup or the last snapshot, there was suspicious activity in there. So recover the previous one. So you're blindly recovering the previous one. You know, with CyberSense, you'll say, hey, there was suspicious activity. Here's the list of files that has suspicious activity and you can do a curated recovery. Because if you're just blindly recovering previous version, you're going to overwrite a bunch of data that wasn't affected and you'll, and you'll have data loss. Um, you know, efficient detection, the fact that it's scanning and you'll know exactly what happened, when happened, it's going to save times in, in the, you know, in the recovery process and what backups need to be recovered. You know, faster recovery will give you and eliminate the need, um, you know, need to do mass restores um, and mitigate future risk. I'll talk about that in more detail, but you know, what, with CyberSense, you'll get the granular forensic analysis of what happens. So it's going to be these 50,000 files across these four servers were attacked exactly at this time the files were modified. So I'll talk about that telemetry data. It's useful for the security team saying, hey, give me that information 
and I can kind of do some analysis on that. So, so there's, you know, we, we push a lot on data integrity and, you know, without having content-based information about the file and what's happened, you won't have integrity and confidence that the data is good. You know, it's the idea is if you if you get home and you feel like there's someone breaking into your house, you know, and the police come and they walk around the perimeter and say, ah, everything looks good, right? You know, with CyberSense, we go in the house and check every nook and cranny, every closet, every bed and say, yeah, now we know it's good kind of thing. So it's, it's really that deep level of inspection. So, you know, again, content analysis is critical. So as Jeff mentioned, there's over 200 data points um, that's part of our secret sauce, but it's really looking at, you know, the header of a file and say, does the extension match what the header says it is? Looking at um, the header of an Oracle database or a page of an Oracle database and saying, is a structure of this what an Oracle database should look like? So it's that level of deep forensic analysis inside the files to make sure that the data is clean. Looking for patterns of corruption that are indicative of ransomware. Um, again, I'll talk about the machine learning and the AI-based capabilities that we do there. But the idea is that we're very fixated on avoiding false positives and false negatives. You know, so some of the vendors out there, backup vendors, may take a backup and they'll look at, hey, the compression of this backup got highly compressed. So you probably have a lot of encryption inside there, which is probably a ransomware attack. So they're, they're letting you put the onus on the customer saying, you go figure out what happened. We're just telling you this something weird happened, right? So what we're saying with CyberSense is like, hey, that backup, here's a specific list of files that were corrupted that need to be recovered. So it's, it's not letting the customer figure out what happened. It's telling the customer this is exactly what happened. And when you get an alert again with CyberSense, Krista was talking about the 99.5% confidence, you know you need to do something. It's not like, hey, I'll get around to it. I get those alerts all the time, right? Jimmy, I, I hate to ask this question, but um, if I've got 99.5% confidence, I've got 0.5% in unconfidence, right? Or oh, the opposite of it, which means, and that could be distributed anywhere mm -hmm. across my data. Yeah. So how, what's your process? How do you handle that? piece of recovery, because yeah. then I'm recovering data which I can't, yeah. could be corrupted, right? Good, good question. So, so a uh, sneak preview of <laughs> what we're going to be announcing later this year is the 99.5 is actually uh, improved to 99.99. Um, so in terms of our testing and what we see. So it's, it's highly confident. So I mean, you, you, never, you never know that there could be certain files that were corrupted. Again, CyberSense is looking for data corruption, and if you can restore 99.99% of the last clean version of files, and you've got 0.001% of stuff that you're not restoring, I mean, there'll be a little bit of data loss in that case, but it's, it's negligible kind of thing. So the idea is, I mean, you're never 100%, right? Nobody's going to ever say you're 100% effective. You're gonna, we want to get as, as far down in the number of nines as possible in terms of our testing, so I, I absolutely agree with you. It's, you know, it's, it's a major, you know, major improvement, but you're still left with 0.1 percent at the end of the year. Yeah. And again, it could be scattered. Yeah. And going back to your point where you said the customer said he just eliminated everything, destroyed every laptop, mm -hmm. everything because he didn't know where right. it was. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still a, a risk. Right. And how do how do you how does a customer handle that with your process? Yeah. Well. So the Irish healthcare system was attacked maybe two years ago now. There's some great, there's actually, it's a public organization. There's great public research on it. It's a fascinating read that, that they hired a, an analyst firm to kind of detail exactly what happened. 85% of their data was encrypted. I mean, that's, most everything was encrypted. What we read in a lot of these studies and customers, when they recover, they typically get 40 to 60% of their data back in a recovery process using backup software from a cyber attack. And that's good enough for them. They're like, that's the best we could do, kind of thing. So, you know, having 99.99% of the data, confidence that data was corrupted and give you a list of files, that restoration process is, is, is pretty, pretty clean. And customers are very happy with that number. I mean, they're happy with, like, if I can get that much data back, I'm in, I'm in great shape. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's not a perfect world in terms of, of what they're doing. But again, you know, they're just randomly encrypting a whole ton of data. And if you can pull the bulk of it back, you know, customers can get back into production pretty easily, so. Thanks. One more question, Gary Ivanoff again, Futurum Group. Obviously, speed is of essence when an attack should occur. 
and it's typically, you know, business as usual. How do companies continue? Does everything stop? Are you able to utilize other data to move forward? Um, at yeah. times, I know companies have to completely stop everything yeah. and just kind of move forward in an old-fashioned right. kind of way to get yeah. things done. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of organizations go back to paper, right. pencil. You know, organizations will use their Gmail or their personal accounts to communicate business. Correct. Fax machines become popular again, you know, that kind of stuff to take orders. So what is um, speed? But there, there is, uh, um, I have some stats on that. You know, customers are saying it's, it's like 70 or 80% faster recovery time. You know, customers should have a run book, should have a run book that says this is the priority of what we need to recover. You know, if, if they have an Oracle infrastructure built, that should obviously be first. Email should be up there kind of thing. You know, so they prioritize what's recovered. We see customers, we had one customer in EMEA, a utility, that they have been attacked frequently and it took them weeks to recover. They had CyberSense with the Dell uh, isolated vault. Um, they recovered in, in, in less than a day and they didn't lose any data. So for them, they were just like, that's, that's insane. Oh, that's excellent. That's so it's really cool. hours and days. I mean, the key point is that when you get attacked and you come into the office, you know, instead of saying, what was attacked, I don't know what to recover. I mean, you have all that information to know exactly what to recover. So at that point, it's your snapshot or your backups that need to be recovered and brought back online. If you don't have the forensic details, you'll be putting all your recent backups online, which takes a long time. Whereas with the forensic details, I'm like, I need this backup, this backup, and this backup, and get back into production. So in terms of real time, are you able to get that up to speed as well? In terms of what? Real time. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of recovering even the timing it, of, of it, the different types of business. Yeah, it's doing. whatever they're putting in the vault. I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of the conversations we're having now is they want to put in some of their AI-based tools into the vault, because a lot of AI is starting to run their business as well. So you put it in a vault, or you snapshot it, and, and analyze it, you know, it, it's protected. I mean, and that's what, what Jeff was mentioning when we first started working with some of our partners. They, they would go to their customer and say, you know, our best practice is, you know, put in the, the, the mission critical data into a vault or isolate mission critical data. And then customers are like, it's all critical. So, you know, best practices was, you know, 10 to 15% of your data. We have customers putting 100% of their data into a vault because they know it's being analyzed. So it's, it's that level of fear and, and just the unknown of what's going to happen. And we're seeing, like in the past, the cyber criminals were typically randomly encrypting data. So they could just encrypt, you know, a bunch of old marketing files or whatever. Now in their dwell time, they're spending a lot of time looking around and understanding what exists. They're using keywords to search for files, confidential intellectual property, passwords, and they're being very granular. We've, we've heard cases of the bad actors getting in and searching and finding the cyber insurance policy understanding how much a company was insured for, and that magically is the ransom that they asked for. So they're not stupid, they're very smart, and they spend you know, weeks and months in there just looking around for stuff. Well, certainly with AI helping us, it's yes. also helping the adversaries for sure. Yes, very much so.